Sanders. All right, joining us from Tampa, Florida, co-founder and publisher of Real Clear Politics, Tom Bevan, and in Washington, foundation professor at George Mason University School of Law, Frank Buckley. He's the author of the book, The Way Back, Restoring the Promise of America. And Frank helped write Donald Trump Jr.'s speech for the Republican convention. Wow, okay, good to have you on board. Good to have both of you guys with us. First of all, uh, let's talk about the polls. Uh, obviously right now, Tom, uh, a, a massive dip uh, for Donald Trump. That's not really a surprise. I would have expected the NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, if released before the debate, to show that much of a dip. Um, any evidence elsewhere that he's falling? Do you expect do you expect him to bounce back, or is this a one-way dive? Uh, we're going to have to wait and see. I know we all want sort of instant gratification to see, you know, based on the debate performance, whether he was able to stop the bleeding or not. Um, but we're just going to have to wait and see. There's a, not really any data available to us now. Um, but to your point, Joe, the the, Wall Street, the NBC News Wall Street Journal poll. It's a snapshot in time, obviously, and it was and it was at the height of the frenzy of the tape. But it does show that this this uh, controversy certainly hurt Donald Trump and hurt the Republican Party more broadly. I mean, I think if you're Paul Ryan and Ryan's previous, uh, there were some numbers in there that have to be pretty alarming uh, for them, uh, even beyond the, the dip that Donald Trump took. Frank, uh, looks like a lot of Republicans are panicking right now. Should they be? No, I don't think they should be panicking, although I think this is for them the crucial election. I think that if you're a Republican, this is your shot at it. So do you, you don't think this is um, like if you called it today, it would be over and Hillary Clinton would be the winner? Do you, you think what's your what's your I, gut I, on the on the potential that Trump could win this election? Well, I can't comment on the probabilities. I think it's uh, anybody who does right now really is just blowing smoke. We don't, we don't know what's going to happen in the next mm -hmm. month. Agreed. Trump has a great ability to bounce back. Mm -hmm. uh, he may very well do so. I hope he does. Um, I, you know, my book was the only one he plugged during the course of the campaign, so uh, I love the guy. But more importantly, I, I think that his program is, is one that would help all Americans. What, what, what programs, what part of his program specifically? Well, he's doing things that Republicans traditionally have not really much cared about. One of them, for example, is the fact that growth in the economy has been spread, uh, directed towards the top 10 percent or the top 20 percent. And there are a lot of people who are left behind, and he's speaking to them. And I think that's really important. They were, you know, Mitt Romney gave up on them. Mitt Romney talked about the 47 percent. That Republican Party, I think, is dead. Yeah, the so, only Republican. So, are you are you talking about his trade policies? Yeah, what's the depth of which tax he's policies? About that? What what's uh, what policies specifically do you think are drawing, like for instance, all the people last night in Pennsylvania out to him? Well, I think corruption is a big part of it, and and uh, as for the traditional Republicans, there is a sense that they were too cozy with Washington, that we have a real problem with crony capitalism. And I expect that Trump would do something about that. I think he would do something about uh, reining in lobbyists and the way they contribute to political parties and maybe ending the revolving door between K Street and, and the Hill. Uh, he, I think, is the only candidate who would effectively take on that problem. We have the biggest concentration of power and influence of any country at any time, and he represents uh, the opposition. This is also a country where people have given up on the idea that their sons will have it better off than they did. That was the, you know, the idea of my book, and uh, and he's the candidate for that. So I, I, I think we'll see a very close race, and what's going to happen, I don't know. Mr. Buckley, talking about um, corruption and special interests and the economy. Should Donald Trump be talking more about those things and less about the Clinton's personal life, or you'd like to see him keep talking about the Clinton's personal life? I'd like well? to see him talking about issues. I mean, I've had it up to here with all the personal stuff, truthfully. I mean, uh, it's, it's uh, not unimportant, but it's largely a distraction. We should be talking about what the country will be like in 2017 and who's going to be the president and what the policies will be. That's going to matter. 
So, so Mr. Buckley, off of that, let me ask you, let's just take a specific time frame here. It's, let's say the last three weeks, the last month. When has Donald Trump ever spoken to those things? Well, he's began, he began to speak about them. And um, in the last uh, debate, I expect that's going to be the theme of the campaign in the next month. And, uh, and I, I'm going to go to Tom about the polls coming up. But Frank, I just the, the, the comments on that tape, I mean, you, you find that you were able to overlook that? No, I don't overlook it. I'm not comfortable with it, but I'd put it in context. I mean, it's, it's you know, let me put it this way. Uh, a 70-year-old is not the same thing as a 60-year-old. I mean, maybe you guys don't get it, but it's true. Yeah, I'm sure he regrets it for all sorts of reasons. I'm also sure it would have nothing to do with the Trump administration. All right, Tom Bevan, I'd like to ask you, um, this is, is this Donald Trump's it's tweet? Brand um, new. Uh, brand new tweet from Donald Trump. Decite, I think it's supposed to say, despite winning the second debate in a landslide, every poll, it's hard to do well when Paul Ryan and others give zero support. Uh, I don't know if every poll has said that, but what poll should we be looking for in the days to come? Uh, well, we should be looking for uh, national polls, which hopefully we'll have by uh, end of the week. Okay. A couple days. I mean, I'm assuming pollsters went in the went in the field on Monday, right after the debate. Um, you know, and, had, and taking a three-day sample. So hopefully, we'll have some stuff by the end of the week. Okay. And obviously, looking at map, more battleground uh, state polling. Hopefully, coming out uh, by the end of the week, beginning of next week as well. So, and what um, poll would Donald Trump be citing, saying he won the debate by a landslide? <laughs> I don't know. You'll have to ask him. Okay. Um, but let me let me just make one more point, Mika, about um, about the NBC News Wall Street Journal poll and and about the Republican Party. I mean, I think you guys have probably mentioned this. I mean, two thirds of respondents said that GOP congressional candidates should support Donald Trump uh, even after this tape. And that is, it, that is a real dilemma for these candidates that are out there uh, because they need the Trump base to turn out because if they don't, they lose. But if they embrace Donald Trump, they risk alienating moderates, independents, women. And that is a dangerous risk for them to be, uh, a place for them to be with just three weeks left to the election. Tom Bevan, thank you very much. Frank Buckley, thank yeah. you as well.